Hey everyone, I'm back. Another Monster Hunter Stories 2 video. Of course, I've been playing this game a lot recently and really enjoying it. So I figured having fully bingoed out most of my party by now and tried out several different builds that I would bring you my top seven gene tips that you kind of would want to know and what I wish I knew earlier on without having to waste time experimenting and farming for different things. Do understand guys, I have played an awful lot of the game. I will try and block out a lot of the other monsters and things as we go through my genes and sort of demonstrate some of the tips and things. But please understand that I'm going to be showing some of the monsters from later on in the game, the Elder Dragons and stuff like that. They've already been revealed on official Capcom streams and on the Monster Hunter 2 website. A lot of monsters have already been revealed in the trailers as well. So I will try and block everything out and everything I show shouldn't be a spoiler for you guys. But if you want to go in completely blank, uh, then maybe skip out on this tip video. But we'll jump in with our first tip, which is to basically explain what a bingo is and to let you know that it is the most important thing for specking your monster out. Uh, let's jump into the right of channeling and have a look at my Nergagonte, for example. Uh, so guys, you can see here uh, that he is fully bingoed out, almost fully to be honest, there's, there's one uh, yellow skill in there as you can see, but effectively the bingo is when you match uh, either in a row, horizontally, vertically or diagonally, so you can see in this like bottom corner I have a diagonal and I also have a horizontal and I also have the vertical but that shows at the very top of that line. If, I hope I'm explaining, this is going to be hard to explain guys, but Bear with me. Basically, matching three colors or three symbols or both three colors and three symbols will net you a bingo. You can see your bingo list actually in the monster here, so we can see the damage bonuses that you get from it. And this is why they're so important and you really want to be focusing in on this. You can see here that I have six non-elemental bingos, Nogagonte being a non-elemental attacker. So I'm getting a 40% bonus, 140% total increased damage on his non-elemental attacks. And I also have one power bingo here you can see for an extra 10% and the way I believe this works is that the first two bingos give 10% and then after that I believe it's 5% uh, for each bingo so there is like diminishing returns after the times two bonus. Now the, that is the reason why it is a super super important thing and you want to be fully bingoing out your monsters as much as you can. You can see here I have a lot of uh, grey ones and I have those three diagonal power ones uh, but I don't have any more than that. There's also no rainbow gene in this one. We'll talk about the rainbow gene in the next tip. Uh, but, uh, and we'll go into specifics later on, but the reason that I am using a uh, a yellow gene on my Nogagonte is to give him paralyzed resistance uh, because I'm sort of doing this in between PVE slash PVP build for my monsties and getting paralyzed, getting slept and stuff like that in PVP, you know, the sleep effect. Uh, is pretty devastating and can lose you uh, hearts very, very quickly. So these resistance genes are very good for PvP. Also good for certain uh, PvE monsters as well, but that is what bingos are. You want to be going for them. They're super important. They're going to make a huge difference in your damage, up to 50% uh, damage bonus, basically. So uh, if you have a fire monster, then you want to be focusing on putting all fire things on it. If you have a non elemental monster like Nogonte here, then you want to put as many greys on it as you can, of course, that synergize. Uh, and stuff like that. So I will say a huge question that I'm seeing loads and loads and loads of people ask is, well, can I put different colored bingos, you know, different colored genes and get different colored uh, elemental attack bingos and change my monster's type? And the answer to that question is yes and no. Uh, I don't know exactly what causes this, uh, but I'll pull up a screenshot now. I put a fire attack XL on my level one Zenoga and it did change him to fire attack. But when he then starts to level up, uh, he reverted back to thunder attack. I think that they have a natural uh, sort of growth in their native elemental attack. So as they get higher level, their thunder attack actually overtakes the bonus that the fire attack was giving. And then because they're now majority thunder, they switch to thunder type. And I thought, okay, well maybe I can mitigate this by putting all fire genes on and getting the 50% bingo bonus on the Sunoga for fire damage. Uh, and I did that, I used a ton of my monsties, uh, all red genes on the Sunoga, and as you can see, it's still a thunder type. So 
Uh, you can change it, but there seems to be some restrictions in how they level up and then what uh, element is their strong one, because their primary attacking element will be their strongest element in their stats. That's basically what causes that. So hopefully that answers some questions. Maybe it leaves you with some more questions, but that's my findings so far. The next tip to talk about, though, is my suggested use of the rainbow gene and should you go for it or shouldn't you go for it? So as you can see here for Nogagante, I have not gone for the rainbow gene, uh, and that is quite simply because there is not two technical uh, non-elemental things that would work for him. There is not two speed non-elemental genes that would work for him. So uh, I wouldn't be able to take advantage of getting multiple cross symbol, cross color bingos on him. Whereas if we go over to uh, my Thunderlord Zenoga, again, this is a monster, a deviant that's been revealed. Uh, so shouldn't be a surprise to any of you f people that are like excited for the game. They've already showed this monster officially. Um, you can see here that I've actually gone for the rainbow gene in the middle. And the reason for that is that I have these two power uh, electric genes. I also have two different colored technical genes. Um, so I can get that bonus there. I can get a speed bonus down the middle and a power bonus down the right. So you can see here that I've actually got a speed technical and a power bingo as well as six uh, different elemental thunder attack bingo. So if we bring up the bonus here, you'll see I've got 40% on thunder and then a times one on each different attack type. And so for me, if you can make a particular color work with multiple uh, different attack type bingos, then you should go for the rainbow gene. Hopefully I'm explaining that uh, well enough. If I go over to one of my other monsters real quick, uh, you'll see that my my Vulcana here is a very good example. Using the rainbow gene, we've actually managed to get three technical bingos, as well as a power bingo, as well as the six ice attack bingo. So we got that 40% on ice, 10% power, 10% speed, and 25% on technical. So we're really cramming a lot of bingos in there by taking advantage of that rainbow gene. If you don't know what the rainbow gene does, it basically uh, acts as any color and any symbol for the purposes of doing a bingo. So you can see that it's applying the power bingo and the technical bingos all at the same time, keeping the uh, ice attack bingo as well where it can fit in. But do notice that here we have a blue and then at the bottom we have an ice. We have water at the top middle, ice at the bottom middle, but we don't have a water attack bingo or an ice attack bingo from that because the rainbow gene still needs two matching things adjacent to it. And because they're different colors and different symbols, there's no bingo straight down the middle here. So hopefully that makes sense. If you can make it work, it's sort of elemental dependent on the monster. Uh, there's not going to be, like I said for my, my Nerga Gonte, there's not a lot of non-elemental options to do this. So generally speaking, you're better to just commit to the one bingo and go for the full non-elemental attack. Whereas on ice, you have quite a lot of options with technical and power, uh, as well as, of course, this, uh, this insomniac anti-sleep gene for PvP that I've got slotted in. So hopefully that's making sense when it comes to the rainbow gene. Which brings me into my next tip, which is that you want to be planning ahead when you are starting out to like juice up your monster with genes. You don't want to just unga bunga slot them in. And the reason for that is that you can't, once they're slotted in, you can't take them off and you cannot move them. So once they're slotted in, they're, they're locked in there for good unless you overwrite them in order to move them somewhere else, which is a whole annoying thing to do. So the best thing that you can do when you're starting to pimp out your monster with genes is basically to plan out in your head, maybe even write it down or something like that uh, it will save you a lot of time. You know, a little bit of prep work now will save you having to completely refarm everything because you slotted one thing in the wrong in the wrong place. So, for example, uh, what I like to do with my monsties is have an attack, a speed, and a technical active skill, so that the monstie, if it has the kinship charge, can do any type of attack. So it can beat any type of opponent. Really good in PvP really good in PvE. Uh, it just means that you won't have to swap out your monster, you know, and so you can keep your strongest monster out or match their elemental weakness and stuff like that. And if you can do that uh, and match it with the rainbow gene like I have here, you'll see that I have uh, uh, this, uh, where is it here? We have Ice Boost XL in the left middle, then it's the rainbow gene in the middle, then on the middle right we have Ice Launcher. So I'm pairing my power ice attack 
with another ice boost gene and it's giving me that power and that ice bonus through the middle. So by planning that out, I've guaranteed my bingos as well as put slotting in two things that I basically need. And then it's like, okay, so now I want to slot in a speed skill so that I have that speed attack covered. Can I find an ice speed gene that can bingo with it? My personal answer here was I couldn't. So instead I put in the anti-sleep gene, lost out on my speed bingo, but managed to snag an extra tech bingo along the top while also keeping a diagonal tech bingo uh, down the side because I have these uh, these Vulcana skills that are all technical slotted in there. So it sort of lends itself to my Vulcana strength. So what I'm saying, guys, is plan it out. Figure out if you're using the rainbow gene. If you're not, go for those bingos diagonally, horizontally. Try and match up your, your types and your colors together if you can. One extra thing is that when you're planning out, remember that these corner slots, uh, every single corner actually bingos three times while the inner slots horizontal and vertical actually only bingo two times horizontally and vertically whereas the corner ones have diagonal as well so when you're planning out an elemental attacking monster using this Valkana as an example you definitely want your elemental genes matching diagonally as well as matching the symbols diagonally if you can and you have the rainbow genes so what that means is uh, if you have your ice, your most important elemental ones in the corner slots, you can go for as many bingos with it as you can. Whereas something like this water anti-sleep one, I've put in the sort of middle slot because then I'm only missing out on one, uh, well, two instead of three being in the corner. I hope this all makes sense, guys. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to demonstrate, but hopefully it all makes sense. So my next tip is to... Uh, get duplicates and fuse them together. So a really great example of this is my ice boost here. You can see it has two stars. Each star means I fuse a duplicate gene onto it to power it up. You can do this with every single gene, uh, active skills, passive skills, and they basically power up the attack. If the attack has high crit chance, it will further raise the damage and the crit chance. If the attack applies a status, it will increase the chance to inflict the status as well as the damage. And for something like a passive like Ice Boost, it will give you more Ice Attack. And the the pluses are roughly a 50% bonus at 2 plus. So when you fuse two duplicates onto it, the actual skill, passive or active, is about 50% stronger. At least that's my testing on the Ice Attack boost, because you can actually see the stat of the monster as you apply it. So at least for Ice Attack, two pluses is 50% better than just regular XL. So the up the pluses, the duplicate fusing, is really really good and will really make your monsters a lot stronger so make sure you are getting duplicates for your favorite monsters then my next tip is to not sleep on the prayer pot so if we just run over to the prayer pot real quick guys this is going to be a very important one when you are gene farming the prayer pot is going to be your absolute best friend you can get this up to level 20 um, by feeding it offerings uh, just like spam giving it them works as well but as you can see at level 20, all of the different prayers actually get boosted, like the percent increases with each level. So you can pray for finding to get 10% rarer genes from eggs. And then you can also give the finding offering to get another 20%. So you could actually get a 30% increased chance to get better genes while you are farming eggs. And that is what you want to do when you're out farming there for the eggs. So don't sleep on the prayer pot. That is my next tip. So another tip I have is to think ahead when you are planning out your genes uh, by looking for synergies that you want to slot into your build. So here is my Teostra build, for example, still a work in progress. But you can see that I have Bombardier XL uh, 2 up, which will seriously boost Blast Blight and Explosives. And he's also got the Bombing Raid skill, which has a high chance to inflict Blast Blight. So that's an obvious synergy there. And there are lots more like this skills that inflict poison or burn or stuff like that. You could pair it with a non-elemental skill that will boost your inflict rate or salt in the wound that will boost your damage dealt to opponents that are suffering from status ailments. So you can really plan your genes together and go for different synergies between them. I really recommend you do that. It's going to make your monster a lot stronger overall. And then finally is to think about whether you're making your monster for PvE or PvP, 
If you're going for PvE, you might just want to stack as many damaging things in there as you can. If you're going for PvP, you might want to think about statuses a bit deeper, as getting uh, put to sleep or getting paralysed in PvP can be very, very dangerous. So something like the anti-negate -para uh, anti paralyze anti-paralysis here is going to be very strong to help you in PvP. So consider making specific PvP monsters, specific PvE monsters, and go from there. So hopefully, guys, that has parted some knowledge to you. It's a lot to explain. It's not that complicated of a system, but, um, you know, it's just all flashing symbols and colors and things. So hopefully that helped. Let me know if you have any more uh, questions and whatnot, comments in the description, in the comments down below, guys. Thank you for watching, everyone. Hopefully this helped. Uh, do make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you do enjoy these videos. And that's it for this one, guys. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching this video. You can check me out over on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Paradise Central. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one and I'll see you guys in the next one.